Yeah, would love to. So there's three things that I think have really been a through line of my my life and, and my journey, and that is being able to harness energy, ignite curiosity, and being able to perform with pressure. Uh, peak performance, my background in tennis, high performance tennis has been a huge part of uh, unpacking that and what that means for every or, everyday ordinary person, which is which is me. I feel like I'm an ordinary person living an extraordinary life because of uncovering little things like that, that then you can have practical strategies to be able to implement in your life. So they're, they're definitely three things that have been a huge part of me taking action and that that's, you know, I always say talent is not nearly as important as execution. So, and I know that you live and breathe that. I love your podcast. So I'm so excited to, to unpack those things with you. Yeah. So let's, let's dive into number one, right? Harnessing mm -hmm. energy. What are some practical tips that people mm -hmm. can do to do that? And follow up question, were you always like that related to energy or did you have to develop and cultivate it over time? Mm -hmm. So the the one that I use with my clients quite frequently is just an energy barometer check-in. Okay. So just being able to use that barometer and say, you know what, and even the way that I describe it with my clients too, it's sort of where I want you to be is in that middle range. Like I don't want your energy to be so, so far on one side of the scale. Like you're like, yes, yes, yes. And then you, you collapse because mm -hmm. I definitely, that's how I used to be. So I, as a speaker as well, I just put so much effort and put so much pressure on myself. Whereas now I mentioned earlier, perform with pressure has been a huge, just reframing that in itself has been a huge uh, uh, hidden secret. And uh, for me, it's, it is a, it's your energy introduces you first. It's, okay. it's like, I call it an energy signature. So being able to be aware of what your energy signature is and where it needs to be in certain uh aspects of your life, home versus at work, for example, mm -hmm. at the gym, uh, and knowing what that that means for you authentically, because energy is not, you know, rah, 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 rah. It's, of course, it is the energy that we, that we bring. And, you know, sometimes we're a magnet and sometimes we're a shield. And sometimes we need to put up that shield when we have our energy vampires around us. So I, I work a lot in topping up energy and uh, understanding when um, your energy is being trapped. So how do we how do we un unlock that? And I think there's there's no doubt my authentic self has a has a natural abundance of energy. Mm -hmm. But I do think what where I've had to work personally is when my energy I've gone too far on one way and then I get I get sick. I used to get sick a lot. I okay. saw it with a lot of my elite tennis coaching um, clients where I you know we'd be representing Australia at the highest level and as you, I know you believe in this hidden secret that the mind and the body are intrinsically connected. So mm -hmm. I started to see even like pre-match headaches, uh, you know, um, you know, some people would, I'd say, well, where do you feel that headache? And they'd say, oh, you know, at the front of my forehead. And, and it was their inability to really acknowledge and see where it is that they wanted to go. So there's some of the little things and little examples, you know, obviously courage and fear live in the gut and pre pre match, you know, when you Australia's playing Belarus and we have to, we need to win this tie, they'd be like feeling really sick. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. So it's how do we, how do we harness that energy in the moment? Uh, so barometer is a good one and, and values. I always say your energy is, Oh, definitely linked to your values is another practical coaching tool. Just checking in with that that but that boat rudder and making sure that your values are aligned with your decision making, which of course is is practice one in my book. Sorry, just had to throw that in there. I'm so excited still <laughs> about what makes a great coach. But practice one is decision making, okay. and practice five is energy. And I researched over 500 coaches and and synthesized into the top 10 practices based on in one to a maximum of three words, what makes a great coach. So, um, so I'm so happy that energy came in at number two because I secretly wanted it to, but I gotcha. wasn't sure if it would. So, um, anyway, I yeah. I'd share that. And, and I love how you said that energy check-in. I'm sure that number one is such a huge transformational moment in people's lives that you coach and, and back when you were coaching tennis, because we, Nine times out of 10, or I'd say 90, 99% of people aren't checking in. Hey, how's my energy right now? Mm -hmm. 
right? So they're not even aware it's really low. And then they go into a big meeting or a good big presentation, or they're speaking in front of a group and they wonder why they're not successful in that endeavor or a match. They're not bringing mm -hmm. that energy to it. If you're not checking in, you're not aware, you can't bring the proper energy to that whatever task or event or game everything, you're playing. Everything yeah. starts with self-awareness, 100%, yeah. Jeff. I know I've listened to your podcast. You're a big proponent of that as well. We have to first be aware. Right. Where, you know, check in with the body and check in with the energy and check in with where you feel it in your body too to help shift that and learn techniques on how to shift that as well. I remember right before my delivering my TEDx talk, Unleashing Female Potential, I was so nervous and I just kept saying to myself, Breathe in confidence, breathe out doubt. Breathe in confidence, breathe out doubt, and fired off my anchor, and you know was able to to perform with pressure. I, I love that, and I go back to I was like ten years old, and I couldn't couldn't get on the basketball court because I was so nervous. Like I just couldn't get on. I was sick to my stomach. I wish I had the tools and strategies I I do now. But what you just said before your TEDx talk so powerful, and and it brings me to. I meditate with my sons every morning before school and we breathe in and I say, in with courage, out with fear, in with confidence, out with nervousness. And it's, it's that self-talk, it's that programming that we can do that have such a, it has such a tremendous impact on how we deliver and how we transfer that energy, that nervous energy into excited energy. And then we're able to, to succeed and, and attack it the way we truly want to. Yeah. And reminds me of another uh, client story around, this is one of my mentors worked with this, with this um, person who was feeling, you know, really like they, they just couldn't have the courage to, to take action in direction of the goals and the, you know, what they really wanted. And he's like, well, where do you feel in your body? It's like, oh, it's in my gut. And okay, well, what color is this? Black. Oh, it's actually black crows. And, and so she starts describing these black crows that are just like, eating away at her guts hmm. and then he he with her in through a beautiful guided sort of um, meditation visualization he he helped turn it from black you know what if they were white and then you know hmm. what if they had wings and you know and then they're little beautiful these white angels that then shift from the front to the back of the spine to be able to help her take a step forward so i just wanted to sh share that of one of my mentors and i love that story because it helps me with my clients too and and everyone needs practical strategies i'm big you can't just go oh yeah i'll, I'll take action oh, i've got courage i'm i'm courageous there needs to be that associated anchor or practical uh, element to it to help everyday people like Look, I need it just as much as anyone else. So, and you and I spoke about that on my podcast. Yep. I remember I said, are you always this happy? <laughs> I'm not. And that's when people are like, you serious? And I, I, I told you on their podcast, that I was voted biggest complainer my, my senior year in high school. And people are like, are you serious? Yes. It's not where you start. It's where you end. And you've got to have these habits, these rituals, self-talk things where you can shift a perspective, have an awareness is, is so important. So let's get into curiosity because I think curiosity is so, so important. And many times we're curious when we're growing up, right? We've got this insatiable curiosity of finding out how to do things, but then we get to adulthood. And many times that curiosity is just switched off maybe by having negativity all around us in the news, media, people in our network, but curiosity dive into that a little bit mm -hmm. why is it so important what are a couple of ways you cultivate that in yourself on a daily basis that people can put action to yeah so uh well a hundred percent agree my story definitely is that so i was a my you know, i was been a coach since i was 14 it was my first part-time job after my paper round right and then, so I, I was coaching at quite a high level for somebody in, in her 20s. And all of a sudden, I was like, I don't want to look stupid. Like, I don't want to, there's all these amazing coaches in the room. So I had all these questions and all these thoughts, but I didn't, for, through sheer fear of not wanting to say the wrong thing, or that's not how you develop a player and, and being cut down and, and also having the experience of where you do say something and you do get cut down and then your self-fulfilling prophecy actually comes comes to reality so my curiosity was definitely suppressed but interestingly i still did things in my 20s for example 
just left Australia, didn't have a job in Florida, and I just rocked up. I wanted to learn from the best coaches in the world. Even though no one rang me back, no one gave me a job, I just knocked on the door and said, can I stand on the court of the greatest coaches? Because, you know, Florida was the mecca of tennis back in the the day. And Mm -hmm. can I learn from the best of the best? And do I see what they see? So even though I wasn't outwardly curious, um, curious, inwardly, I was still super curious. So I just want to say that because I think that's important. Sometimes, yeah, you might not want to uh, say something in a in an audience, but continue to harness that by asking great questions. Mm. Get the best of the best. Find the best of the best. And dead or alive, or or through a podcast, it doesn't matter. It's about finding those people because I always say confidence equals time plus experience. Now we can short circuit time because quality time, of course, mm-hmm. but we can short circuit the experience of others. People, wherever you want to go or wherever you want to be, I'm not saying you need to be like that person, but you can short circuit their experience. Add it to your own strategy toolkit, your your personal toolkit, and see what works best for you. And the best way to do that is ask questions. We have two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> the more we can get curious with the way that we ask questions to, you know, I wonder how you did that. I love I wonder questions and possibility questions and imagine if questions and learn the look questions. Do I see what you know, that coach saw, or that's, I mean, that's my example. Cause that's, that's what I was, you know, I'm, or I'll never stop being curious about how the best coaches in the world do what they do. Mm-hmm. Because as in my book, I called that my chapters practices, they're not right. chapters and it's not best practice. It's just next practice. It's an evolution. We continue to move forward in, in practicing what it is that, that, that is critical to our own uh, realm of curiosity and just just not letting things like the FOMO and imposter syndrome and meritocracy get in the way. So uh, so I, I I think curiosity is one of our superpowers. And I, I love how you said asking questions and I wonder how, right, you frame it up in, in that manner. And I'll, I'll share an experience where there's the man in the arena, Tom Brady series. And uh, I used to, when he was on the Patriots, not a huge fan. Cause I was, I'm an Eagles fan and, and, you know, we battled in the Super Bowl. Luckily we beat him, but, uh, I, I I'm watching the series now because I want to see what I can gleam or I'm curious of how he developed into the best of all time. I've got a son who's a quarterback. I'm like, why not watch this and see? And, and so many times there are nuggets and powerful pieces of wisdom that you can find from people and then you can implement in your life because Mm -hmm. those that have been in at that level, they've gotten there from, for some reason. And if you can take something from it, you're just going to be better, better for it for sure. Yeah. A hundred percent. Couldn't agree more. Yep. Awesome. All right. So we hit energy. We hit curiosity performing under pressure or with pressure. Let's dive into that one. Yeah. So I, in all my years of being a high performance tennis coach, now now I'm in the corporate space, I've only ever met three players where I said, you have to step up and win for Australia today. We really need this win. <laughs> like this is a critical match. If we don't, we're going to be relegated to group B and then we're going to, you know, next year we're going to start all over again. Three, three players. And even for me to understand uh, those three players, that took a lot of time to be able to say, hey, we need to step up. We need the win today. Every other person that I've worked with, if the, if I said that to them, the, they it, winning just gets pushed further away. And, of course, we all want to win. We want to win in life. We want to win in closing a, a corporate deal. We want to win in the workplace with our relationships. And the more so, – so it's like this umbrella goal that's there. But if you focus on that, that's when you're performing under pressure. You can almost feel that pressure coming down on your shoulders. Gotcha. So if we can reframe pressure and work, embrace it, and that's why I love with pressure, and that's not mine. I I, I took that off somebody uh, that I was on an Instagram with. He's like, oh, with pressure. And I'm like, I love that. I'm taking that uh, totally. Yeah. Um, because, that, you know, that's how we all learn. That's another example of I'm just – 
you know, we're, we're building off each other. I've, I've, I love uh, rise, fight, love, repeat. I'm like inspire, improve, impact, repeat. I'm like, I'm, yeah, let's get up and do it again. Love so, it. so, uh, so with that, it's the way that you set up with the situation and, uh, and in my book, um, a, a very former world number one, uh, Matt Swalander, he talks about, uh, I said, what makes a great coach? And he said, in the moment, right? Mm. So yes, in being in the moment, being present, being able to have the tools and the strategies to be able to just fully focus on whatever you need to in that moment. So what can I focus on and what do I choose to focus on? Because it is a choice and I'm a right. huge believer in, in building that in young kids all the way right through building their decision-making skills so that you can be present and perform in the moment. Make no mistake about it. The minute the mind goes into the past, the minute the mind goes into the future, right, that is when the the performance comes under pressure rather than embracing and going with pressure. Uh, so that is really, really critical. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I'm such a believer in this, and I've seen it work time and time again. This isn't, you know, this is, someone who's been coaching for over 30 years. I know, okay, I don't look that old. Oh, it's an audio podcast. We're okay. Uh, but I, I, you know, I'm passionate about helping people build those strategies to find how that looks like for them. How do they need to be present um, through different coaching strategies? What are your thoughts on that, Jeff? No, I, I, I loved the language, right? The difference in language of performing under pressure you just said the umbrella over top. I mean, right? That that's kind of weight and heavy instead of with. Now it's with you. It's coming along. So that's incredibly important. And you know, to the the three times you had to speak to an athlete, like we need to do this for Australia, and having knowing who you're speaking to, mm -hmm. what are they going to respond positively, or all the others would have just it would have crushed them under it, and it. it just immediately went back. I coached my oldest son, his first grade basketball team, and we're in the championship game. And our best player at the time, he's got a stomach ache. And here he was a North Carolina Tar Heel fan. And I said, oh my gosh, Michael Jordan. I, I Michael Jordan was a Tar Heel. He was sick. He performed in the finals. I literally said to him, his dad's like, he's not going to play. And I said to him, I said, can you channel you're a ZONC fan can you channel your inner michael jordan remember did you hear the story when he was sick and he played in the oh yeah i heard that can you do it and he said yes and he went out and performed so totally in line with you there and it's amazing you know i get goosebumps right now just thinking about that moment and i'm sure you do uh, you mm -hmm. know with people that you coach when you can be so aligned that you know their vibe, their frequency, and be able to guide them to step past and and through and really perform at a high level. So yeah, yeah. and on that, just one more quick story. Uh, I just went back to the um, the World Championships. This is only a couple of years ago, just pre pandemic. Okay, and I had three completely different players on my team, and. That's why I always laugh at the NFL teams too. I was like, oh, wow. You know, because at the end of that week, I had, I had, like, I didn't know who my personality was because one of my players was so low, laid back. She was like almost lying back in her chair. The next one was like half Australian, half Russian. She's like, divide, divide, come on, come on, you know. And right. then the other one was like, her performance was so like this. I had to be like a complete flat line gotcha. sitting in the chair. So at the end of the week, you know, I think that that's important too as leaders. I'm a huge proponent of, of servant leadership and, you know, Gandhi, there go my people. I must follow them for I, I am their leader. And, and so being able to understand who's in front of you and what they need in that moment to perform with pressure is super interesting. And the reason, one of the reasons why I love to coach, I'm so curious about it, mm -hmm. uh, of discovering what their energy is. It's, it's going to, um, come to the surface. So I just thought that story was super interesting too. And one more, one more, because I've never told this story. Do we have time? Oh, I, if you're here to tell a story we've never heard before, go ahead. All right. This is, this is honestly, I've never told this on any, any podcast before, but I was about 23 and I was traveling through Greece and I hung up my rackets and I was backpacking on 50 Australian dollars a day. I find myself in this place called Meteore, which is um, these Greek monasteries. They're a, it's a James Bond film, but anyway, they're on the okay. top of these rocks. They're amazing. And so I, I went up to one of these, you know, these monasteries 
And I was like, well, where are all the monks? And they're like, oh, it's the, like the intramural monk soccer match with, amongst all the monks with the monasteries. Okay. And I was like, oh, that is super cool. And there was a creed on the wall and it said, winning is great. Losing is a part of the sport and competing is the ultimate. Yeah. And it, it's shaped, that story has just even shaped the way that I have in, think about competition, think about pressure and embracing it. So I hope yep. you like it. Like I did. That say it, say yeah. it one more time so everybody can get it. The say creed, what, the creed, the creed that oh, was on the was, wall. Say. Winning, winning is great. Losing is a part of the sport and competing is the ultimate. Yeah, so so so, so I had that translated. Obviously, it was in, it wasn't in English. But I said, "Well, right. what's that? What's that on the wall over there?" I was like, "Oh my goodness!" I was like, "That is gold dust." And I just thought of that story recently. I hadn't because it's been such a natural part of the way that I coach. That mm -hmm. hey, competing that's that's the battle is is where it's at. That's the fun part. And uh, you know, I, I hope everyone. Um, yeah, can take something out of that and, and apply it to their own personal toolkit. No, uh, I I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that uh, that story that you never shared. And it takes me back to, you know, being a dad with my two mm -hmm. boys. And the other night at dinner, I read them Theodore Roosevelt's "Man in the Arena" speech because it was like, right, it's it's who is in the arena that counts, right? So uh, totally align with you there, Emma. This has been an amazing interview. Where can people find you? Where can they find your book? Yeah, so uh, if you just go to Emma Doyle, my name, e w m a d o y l e dot com dot a u, because my mum always says, remember to come home to Australia every once in a while. I'm based out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, with the book, they can just go to what makes a great coach dot com, uh, and please reach out if I can be of service or you need an energy speaker. Jeff and I are in that space together, and uh, I look forward to connecting with uh, anyone who's interested in harnessing energy, igniting curiosity, and performing with pressure. Awesome, Emma. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate you. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing rest of your day. Rise, fight, love, repeat. Get after it, and I'll talk to you soon. Get after it. Thank you for listening to your Hidden Edge podcast. You are now part of the movement, part of a tribe who's on a mission to uncover their hidden edge. We are stronger together, so please share this. Show up with one person in your network that you want to help. Together, we can empower others, and connected, we can make a dent in the universe.